Thanks, Harry. So Troy, New York, at the turn of the century, was the fourth wealthiest city in the United States. It was a hub of industry due to its location along the Hudson River and along the rail lines. And the buildings really reflect that. And things really went downhill in the 80s. Vacancies were up, spirits were way down, a lot of people moved out, and uh, it was really kind of a rough time to be in Troy. What's happening now is we're seeing a, a resurgence and it's, uh, it's electrifying and we're happy to be a part of it. Uh, Heather and I met together working in minor league baseball. Uh, I moved up to Troy to work for a team that was nearby, so did Heather. I'm from Brooklyn originally, and I had a 10-year career in baseball, uh, but I was fired for marrying this girl, and <laughs> it was the best thing that ever happened. Because minor league baseball teaches you to be resourceful. It teaches you to work with what you got. Most importantly, minor league baseball teaches you to be creative. And when our career ended in baseball, I wasn't that worried. I knew that I had a great partner here. And whatever we did would be successful. We weren't quite sure what we were going to do. But we were back in Brooklyn considering moving, moving there. My father said to me, check out this wine bar that opened up on Cortelio Road. And we walked through the door, and we looked at each other, and we said, this is what we need to do in Troy, New York, because we can afford to do it. We had a little bit of money saved up. So we bought this building here, 12 Second Street. It's a three-story building. It wasn't a great building in our estimation back then. It didn't really have any architectural elements that were out necessarily outstanding. But we figured that we can live there together on the third floor and open up a small wine bar on the first floor. It was a very small footprint. Uh, there wasn't much to look at in terms of the interior. Drop ceilings, a lot of plaster, linoleum tile. We came in, we did an interior demolition, and we started to see the exposed brick. And then we said, you know what? We might have something on our hands here. This could be special. Right around this time, the local Rensselaer County Historical Society came in and they said, you know, this was a special building. This was the Lucas Confectionery. And so from there, we really started to do our research. Um, first thing we learned was that Lucas Confectionery was established by Charles F. Lucas and his wife, Louisa, when... Uh, in 19, or excuse me, 1863. So they came to the U.S. from Austria in 1850 and started this business at 12 Second Street in 1863. The business went on up until 1954. And in 1954, the Troy Record, our local newspaper, wrote this about Lucas Confectionery. It was the most marvelous restaurant north of Manhattan. And it will never be replicated. So after reading those words, we knew we had some work to do. <laughs> we couldn't leave those words behind. So first, we decided to actually name the wine bar Lucas Confectionery, with some pretty big shoes to fill. And then we reached out to the community. So we sent out a press release engaging the public and asking for stories, anecdotes, details, anything anyone in, in the city of Troy might know about Lucas Confectionery. And two, we invited people into the space to watch our progress. Maybe not something we could, would have been able, that would have been very successful in New York City, but in a city of 50,000 people, people were really excited. This photo here, this, we were very motivated by the past, as you can tell. <laughs> we even engaged our dog. <laughs> um, so what happened at this point was we got the stories, some really neat details, like Lucas Confectionery was really known for its non-sweetened pistachio ice cream, which was delivered throughout the city. And they were also known for making wedding cakes and these really glorious sugar castles, which you probably saw a picture of earlier, uh, and is currently, one example is found in the Historical Society in, in downtown Troy. But something else came out of this that we didn't necessarily expect. And that was as people from the community started to come through and visit the space, they not only stopped in and said hello and asked questions, they came back with items that they had in their homes and their businesses that had for a very long time been part of Troy. Two of 
of our favorites, I would say, uh, many of our tables in the confectionery are made of marble. It would have cost a lot of money if we had to purchase that marble, but our next door neighbor owns a space that was formerly an apothecary, and what lined the walls of the apothecary was marble. He had this marble sitting in his garage for years and could not think of one reason to use it. He donated it to us. A local Italian restaurant had an espresso machine from the early 60s sitting in its basement. Hadn't been used for over 30 years. They donated it to us. It's now a staple of Lucas Confectionery today. So business was good. We got off to a good start and realized very quickly that uh, people wanted to eat here. And the footprint was very small. Uh, this is about it. This is 1,300 square feet initially. So uh, one of the, it, the, it's crazy in Troy, there are buildings that are literally in a state of mid-collapse. And one of them was right behind us. This is the confectionery right here. This is the floor plan. And then over here on Broadway is a behemoth of a building, 11,000 square feet. It was full of rubble. Right around March 2011, um, we decided, you know what? We, we may make a go for this thing. And everybody we talked to tried to talk us out of it. Uh, it was in, in a state of serious disrepair. Now, from the front, not so bad. You know, you're thinking, OK, coat of paint, couple windows, we could be all right. But from the back, <laughs> the building had literally collapsed, all four stories. There was no support system in the basement. There was no foundation whatsoever. Uh, in order for us to do this, we had to rebuild the back wall and all the floors in between. Uh, this is a shot looking into the roof that had collapsed, and that's looking from the left side over there. So it was a very daunting task, and everybody that we asked said, stay far away from this building. There was a structural engineer who literally ran down the block when I said, hey, can I talk to you about the building on Broadway? <laughs> but there was one man who, who believed in us, and it was Jeff File, who we started the presentation with. And Jeff File, he said, go for it, that my career started in a similar way with a building just like this. And so we did. I mean, if you look here, th that piece of wood, that four by four is holding up the entire roof. We had to tooth in the masonry at all levels, and uh, the building is now structurally stable. We work with a structural engineer who wrote things in layman's terms. It was myself and a crew of four other, four other guys. It was done in a very primitive method, utilizing mixed uh, concrete by hand and wood. And it was, uh, it was Puerto Rican style, as, as my right-hand guy likes to call it. A lot of cleanup, a lot of labor, and halfway through the job, you know, we're working hard and it dawned on me. The only reason why Jeff File said take this building on is, is because he knew we would buy all the materials in his hardware store. <laughs> and we did, we're in there six times a day. But this is what it looked like about a year ago. Uh, and then the first area that was rehab was our backyard, or the former backyard of the confectionery, which was open in a half demolition style as a garden patio. So I love Vic's version of this story because it's very matter of fact. It's like, oh, of course, this is what we were going to do. No problem. I thought he was crazy. I thought Jeff was crazier for encouraging it. Um, and quite frankly, was terrified about taking on the project. Uh, but it was absolutely 100% what we needed to do. So today, the, the garden is really our thriving space for the community, for community members to host events and for us to host events. So you see, saw a picture there, a couple of pictures of weddings that we've hosted in the space. Other examples of events are Paint with Wine and one of our personal favorites, Yappy Hour, which is a weekly happy hour for pets and their humans. <laughs> And I, and I think what keeps coming back in this whole process for us really is that community piece. And, and one thing that I just wanted to go back to here, I think one of the most magical moments for us with Lucas Confectionery was the night before we officially opened. And we walked around the space, or ran around the space, because we really had no idea what we were doing at that point, helping customers, helping our guests. And every time you turned around, the conversations that you heard were about the contributions that the people in that room had made to the space. 
And so in that way, something that's really special about this project is that not only were Vic and I involved in the preservation, but really the entire, you know, in many ways, the entire community of Troy. So the space was so popular and, and our business quickly became contingent on the additional space. We doubled the size of the restaurant and we didn't want to um, shrink it again in the winter. So last November, this time, we put in a retractable roof. And so we're open 365 days a year there and it's, it's magnificent. You feel like you're outdoors uh, all the time. Uh, as we're starting to populate the rest of the building, this is a former storefront that was a video store. This is the behind view here. Uh, it is now a grocery store. Uh, we have local products and produce for the community cheese and meat and, um, you know, all types of items that weren't available to a community that most people live in do not have cars. We host Sunday supper here as well, so it's become an event space that's pretty cool. And uh, all different types of community nights. We opened up a, a juice bar in the space as well. And in the future, we look to reopen a fine dining restaurant in this space here called The Tavern. But uh, we weren't intending to be developers. It was a total accident. We never applied for historic tax credits. We never asked for a grant. The only thing we asked the government is just leave us alone for a while while we fix this building. And they were great, and they did that. And so it's an honor to be standing here today and uh, a total accident. Thanks for the opportunity. <laughs>